Hello guys and welcome to another edition of Rage Against the Dice. Today, as you can see, it's still October and we've got Speed Freaks in front of us finally. I'm pretty darn excited. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have a look at this box. Now, this arrived while I was in the middle of filming another video. By the time you see that video, this one will already be up. So, you know, it'll be like time travel. So this is a new style of box for Games Workshop as well. Look, lidded box. But first, we'll have a look on the back. Whoa. I'm not going to lie, it's fair heavy, it's fairly heavy as a box goes. So what you get in this box is you get Custom Boom Blaster, Warbiker Boss Knob, Shock Jump Dragster and Warbiker and I believe you get two knobs, four bikers, so three on each side. You also get the scenery and the good stuff. We don't really care about the back of the box though do we, so let's bust this bad boy open. What I'm going to do is just very very carefully try and get this shrink wrap off, you know me? Every unboxing we do is always 100% genuine, and so we always make sure to wait and take the shrink wrap off. And you always get to watch me struggle with it, which is always quite funny. I can't do it. Just can he do it, Captain? So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the sprues, we're going to have a look at it all separately and then we'll delve into the cards and things like that. So, box slides off. It's very, very cool. Oh yeah, I just said it was a slidey off lid. It's always been slidey off lid, it's just the fact that the box goes halfway down. Have you look. So it's easier to get off. Yeah. Good sturdy box. Box is irrelevant, but what we'll do first is we'll have a look at the scenery. And this comes across on two sprues. And um, we'll snap this in half. So on this first sprue you get a bit of wall, junk pile, another wall. Let's spin this down. And then on this one, oh, that's my orky, excitable nature. On this one what we've got, wall, a couple more scrap piles. I really, really like these. They're going to definitely appear in Necromunda for me. They're most likely going to be also used in Gorkamorka, and yeah, can't say fair on that, so let's have a look. So you get the biker sprue, and you do get all three sprues. We were speculating about this, so you do get obviously all the bits to make the knob. You get all the little extras as well, like the extra weapons. Um, this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this box out of the way so that we can have a look at the sprues individually. Oh, that's a heavy box. It really is. Heavy, heavy box. So we'll go down to the mat and have a look at it. So here you have it. We did look at these sprues the other day, but there's never any harm in looking at them again. So you do get duplicate sprues. Obviously, you get one for yellow team and one for red. So what we will do is we'll just look at the one and then we'll briefly make sure that everything's there on the other. So you get, as I said, these cool heads, um, the grot head that hangs off the back, and the bikes themselves. You get the big shooters, obviously the legs, um, three torsos on there, all the little extra bits. And these are what we like, though. So we like that chain. We love that one and obviously that pipe itself. So these are really cool. And if you want to do a very orc bikery based gang, if you can pick up those little bits from somewhere like Bits and Kits and stuff like that, they definitely pimp out your normal orc boys. Then you get the bits to make the orc sort of war, but oh, sorry, orc knob on bike. You get this big power axe which is connected to a chain in case he drops it. You get the power fist. And I'm assuming when we look through the game, we'll see if these are actually relevant. Um, and then you get two separate orc heads. Um, obviously, they're all interchangeable. These are the old orc kits. So that'll fit with any normal orc set, and you'll be just fine. What we'll do now is, as I said, we'll very, very briefly look at these and make sure it's all there. So, yeah. So, as you can see, exact same thing, but on a yellow spruce. We won't spend too much time on them. I will snap those sprues there for ease of storage. And again, nothing missing, exactly the same. Um, so if you're collecting an orc army, that really does bolster your orc army. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this sprue. Boom. So there's a lot going on on this sprue here. Um, 
from orc bodies, your multitude of wheels, your weapons. Now, you're looking at those orc bikes and you're thinking, well, they go together pretty easily. This looks like a lot of parts, it really does. But yeah, so I'm going to have some fun putting this together and I might actually do a video on building this because I'm really, really excited. Now, I love this little guy up at the top here. The little sort of hanging off grot. Look at him. It's just cool. It's so much character to these new Orc vehicles. As I said, I definitely, definitely want to get them thrown together as quickly as possible. Um, and then obviously there's this guy as well. Um... You know, I do like the different coloured sprues. Um, and I like the fact that you get two different vehicles. Because if you're buying it for your Orc Army, obviously that's really, really good. Because I've not played the game yet. I don't know whether that's going to give one team an advantage or a disadvantage. But I'm sure we'll find out as we go along. I know that I can rope Sparks into playing it with me, even if no one else does. But I think actually Liam has got a touch of the Orky love going on at the minute. So these are really nice. But sprues are sprues. We want to see them when they're built. One thing I will show you, though, is look at the chunkiness of these bases. Boom. I don't normally stick vehicles on bases. And I feel if I start to stick these guys on bases, then I'll have to stick all my vehicles on bases. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see how we come. I do like the chunky, chunky nature of those, though. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get all the cards and stuff out. I'll take off the shrink wrap and then we'll have a look at them. And um, we will do a separate video on just looking at the rule book. So the first thing we've got here is the little dashboards. And as you can see, they're two. They're identical, so you're not going to have anyone fighting over them. The card, and this is something I always comment on, the card is pretty thin. Um, but I'm sure it'll probably be absolutely fine. I mean, as I said, they're not something that's going to be used a lot. So these things fold up here. They just go over like that. So they don't stick together, which is good, meaning you can fold them back down. And I just fold it away and put it away. I mean, the artwork on it is gorgeous. Look at that. And again, identical for both. So, like for me, where I've got boys, they're not going to fight with each other. Um, you know, kids specifically, not singling out a gender there. Um, but yeah, these are really cool. As I said, a bit thin, but maybe that's purely just for the purposes so they can bend and things like that. You get the obligatory clear Games Workshop ruler now. Um... And I do love the little orky racing stripes down the sides. <coughs> it takes me back to my very, very long ago second edition days. Then you get two sets of dice. Um, and then you get a D8. And obviously these are how you mark your driving and things like that. Um, we'll have to look in the actual rules when we get there to find out exactly what they used for in the game. I did, as I said, when we did the look at things, I did try and stay away from all that stuff online. Um, you get two separate sets of cards. You get the custom job cards and the critical damage cards. So, or damage cards, sorry. And and these are obviously for souping up your stuff. And they've got a mech boy symbol on them. They've got a proper orgy damagey symbol. Now, again, they're okay. Um, for £90, and you get obviously six bikes, which are 25 each, so 50, and then the two vehicles. So, you know, it's still worth it financially, especially if you're going to use everything. But the cards themselves aren't particularly good card stock. But again, they're not going to be ones I think you're going to be travelling along with you. I think this is going to be more a play-at-home kind of game than a go-out-and-about. But obviously they've got different things on them, like this one suffers one damage. We'll flip it. Right, so all the damage ones seem to suffer one damage, and then the critical ones, they're different. Does that sound right? You know, anybody, yeah, suffer one damage, suffer one damage. So, yeah, um, yeah, that works. You know, you take a standard damage, or you take multiple damages of different types. Then you've got, obviously, your custom jobs. Subtract one from the result of your driving tests for this model. Your opponent must re-roll one successful attack dice. Um, that kind of thing. So we'll have a look at those in more detail when we cover the rules. And as I said, I'm going to get Sparks to help me with that because when it comes to rules, Sparks is really your man. Um, so here we have the rules for not only the vehicle that you get with the game, but also for the others. So here you can see the Mega Track Scrap Jet. You've got its armor value, its hits, its melee, and its driving skill. And then you've got all its guns down there. You've got your abilities across there. So you get 
In this set, you get the Mega Scrapjet. You get the Custom Booster Blaster, which is obviously one of the ones in this set. And then you get the Boom Dacker Snaz Wagon, another from this set. Uh, oh, no, that isn't. Sorry, no, this one isn't in this set. Which makes me sad, because it's actually my favourite of the new vehicles. But I'm going to pick that one up on Monday. I didn't actually order it with this set, because I wasn't sure exactly, you know, what I was going to have spare. But, yeah, I think I'm going to go pick up the other ones if they're already out. If not, I'll have to pre-order them. I'm not quite sure. But, anyway, back to this. So, this one is the other one you get, isn't it? It's the Shock Jump Dragster, um, which is really, really nice. And then you've got the Death Killer War Trike, um, which has that war boss on it. And, again, we all know how much I really, really want that. Then you've got the Squig Buggy. And then you've got one, two, three, four, five... And six bikes, and on that you've got the war biker and you get the bus knob. So these cards, these are actually, again, not brilliant stock, but they're a bit better than the little cards. You'd think it'd be the other way around. These basically stay flat all the time. They get handled loads, these ones, so you'd think they'd be a bit better stock. But all in all, I can't really complain. And um, Now we're going to look at the tokens. Now the tokens come on these big sheets like this. Um, and pop it out, and this is obviously all your movement things as well. As I said previously when I talked about this, it does have a very Gaslands-y feel about it. And I'm kind of hoping that's how it plays, because I love Gaslands. But these, see, that's where your money's gone. These are good quality. Um, they're still cardboard, so they obviously have the potential to damage, but they're less likely to damage than, like, these. These are going to bend really easily. Um, and obviously, you know, give it a couple of weeks, MDF and acrylic versions of these will be popping up all over the shop. But no, these are, you know, a decent stiff amount of terrain, you, um, stiff cardboard. You get this big sheet here with all your different turns and things like that. And I'm assuming these are your objective markers. Let's flip them across so it's the same on both sides. Um, you get a big orky coin up there, um, which... Again, looks the same on both sides, so it's obviously not for flippable purposes. Um, but yeah, again, decent quality. Um, that's what you get. You get this little... I love... Dan Abnett is my favourite Black Library author. Love his work, and obviously The Beast Arise is a really, really good book. It gives you a very thin, cheap version of Volume 1. It kind of gives you a sample chapter to get you involved and it is a really good book so I you know I suggest anybody who hasn't already read it pick it up it's fantabulous um, and then we come to the rules and we'll look at the boards last so you get this which is your assembly guide and again it's got your basic games workshop blue one grey yellow 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 we're not going to really look through that we will look at the back though they look beautiful and then obviously it'll show yeah, your colours and your bikes and things like that there. It has all your rules, so you can use them in the main game. Um, again, it's got power points or whatever they call power levels instead of your proper rules, but that's okay. Ooh, some green. We've got an extra evolution. These bikes you can literally build in your sleep. I say literally, no, you can figuratively build in your sleep. You do have to chop off a little thing there so you can put the hand on. But other than that, they go together really, really nicely. Obviously, I've not built any of the new vehicles, so I couldn't tell you exactly where them. And then we have the rule book, which isn't too thick, which is good. Because, as I said, I think it obviously is a smaller skirmish game than the likes of Necromunda, for instance. And and Gorkamorka and things like that. Um not looking at the rules, I don't know if there's any progression or anything, but that's something we'll kind of find out. Now, the rule book itself is decently thick, um, nice artwork, things like that. It's what you kind of expect from Games Workshop, I'm sure as I read through it, I'll find a load of proofreading errors, because <laughs> Games Workshop's really, really bad for that recently, but it kind of shows you how everything goes together. It's got there, so you've got your cunning phase, speeding phase, shooting phase, and fighting phase. Um... Yeah, I mean, your rule book, it's a standard, standard rule book. It's got, obviously, your dash showroom at the back. And, again, it shows you some of the new stuff um, with the last couple on the back. That is still my favourite vehicle, the Boom Dacker Snaz Wagon. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. I can't, can't stress how beautiful it is. And then we have the boards. Boom. So, here you go. Um, Double-sided. You've got... Two very different sands. You've got this kind of 
what I class as like a scrapyard kind of sand and then you've got uh, this kind of more deserty sand and the boards themselves come one, two, three, four parts um, and I'm assuming you've got choices of putting them all together into one big, big one or you can play them on different size ones but again, once we cover the rules we'll know that in more details so guys, first impressions for me is I'm absolutely ecstatic um, as I said, when you watch that next the video when this arrived, when it came you'll see that I lost all motivation for that video um, but I'm really, really excited for this I think the boards, really good quality the models, we'll see when we build it but I know the bikers are obviously the old bikers, so they're good quality. The rule book itself, nice and strong, same as the templates. The cards are a little bit thin, but, you know, they're cards. At the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. You can sleeve them up. Um, you know, they are an odd size, but I'm sure there's sleeves for them. If not, Games Workshop will definitely produce their own. Um, they're getting smarter with regards to that. But no, I'm super happy so far. Um, oh, yeah, you do get this as well. Um, boom! which is like a cool little picture with Speed Freaks on the back. Um, you may see that popping up in some of our videos and things like that. I know obviously Blood Bowl and Necromunda both gave you one similar, I think. I, actually, I don't know about Necromunda. I know Blood Bowl did, um, and obviously Speed Freaks does. But no, all in all, I'm very, very impressed so far. I would give it, um, well, as things stand, I'd give it four wars out of five, which isn't too bad, you know, that's kind of... Run, run through a whole planet but not a whole star system so it's not too shabby once I built the models obviously I might have some better opinions but yeah guys let us know in the comments below if you've got your speed freaks what do you think if you're not going to get speed freaks let me know why maybe it's that you don't like orcs maybe you're sick of Games Workshop releasing £90 box sets every month um, you know let me know but you know thank you very much for watching guys please leave a like on this video if it's your first time watching our channel, definitely think about subscribing. Fuels my ego, which is obviously very important. Um, we're coming to an end of October now, so regular programming will resume and we'll see a lot of different stuff instead of just all orky. But no, guys, thank you very much for your time. Pray at the dice cards and hope they smile upon you and have a great October. Wah. Bye.